Hello, my name is Judith Adu Soltis, and I'm the CEO of Caswell Capital Partners based in Accra, Ghana. Trained as a lawyer and investment banker, I've been a financial advisor to sovereign governments, multilateral institutions, global corporations, and African entrepreneurs, large and small, for nearly 35 years. So when my dear friend Amit Bhatia, the founder of the award-winning social enterprise, Aspire Impact, asked me to collaborate with him and his team to launch the Impact Future Project Africa, I leapt at the chance. The thought of putting my experience of financial innovation to the service of Africa's social development goals at this particular moment in time is just for me uh, an extraordinary opportunity. Inspired by IFP India, the premise for IFP Africa is simple but not easy. It is a 12-month inquiry starting here and now that will virtually convene people like you, meaning the smartest, most experienced participants in the global impact ecosystem, to share impact lessons and insights and to identify actionable ideas that can be implemented at scale across Africa, led by Africans ourselves to meet our many development challenges. The good news is we agree on purpose. The good news is we agree on purpose. The UN Social Development Goals are a solid blueprint for our desired future, and we largely know how to do it. There's ample evidence in Africa and around the world as to how best to eradicate poverty, educate our children, solve our health challenges, build affordable housing, and protect our environment, just to name a few. Moreover, there's enough capital in Africa and around the world in the aggregate to finance the effort, although we need to get smarter about how best to channel it, especially in the face of declining aid dollars to Africa. The true question is how can we, together, resolve to get smarter, faster, and to marshal the courage to implement what we know works in ways that are sufficiently innovative to achieve the outcomes that we all desire and to do so at scale across the continent. Intuitively, we know that Africa can make good use of the best of our culture and youthful vigor to maximize our natural resources by leveraging science and technology the diaspora and our global networks identify both livelihoods and fair markets. We also know that there is a special role for corporations and their shareholders, especially in this new era of declining aid dollars. ESG is a great start, but it's not impact. And impact, while critical, is not outcome. We must adapt our lessons learned at the speed and scale to shift the trajectory of our efforts to meet the African century that lies before us. With this in mind, it is my honor to welcome you to the official launch of the IFP Africa Project at the eighth annual SANCOP Africa Summit 2021. Our first speaker today is Mr. Amit Bhatia an award-winning social entrepreneur and former CEO of the Global Steering Group for Impact Investment. He is a tireless crusader for all things impactful, including wisdom. We first met in Jordan some more than 10 years ago at a summit organized by the Aspen Institute. Somewhere between the Dead Sea and the mysteries of Petra, we became friends and comrades in the development movement. If the shoe were on the other foot and it was a mitt introducing me, I promise you he would serve up some exquisite poetry for your consumption. I, by contrast, am inspired by a morsel of contemporary pop culture, namely the recently released number one hit film on Netflix called Namaste Wahala, a Bollywood Nollywood collaboration that some con consider to be the first of its kind. The Sanskrit word namaste is a greeting that literally means I bow down to the God in you. Wahala is a Hausa word popular in West Africa that means big trouble. The unusual juxtaposition of these two words in what is a quintessential love story can perhaps inspire us all. As we start our inquiry into Impact 3.0, let's greet the challenges before us together. With that, I offer you a mitt. My name is Amit Patia, and I'm the founder of Aspire Impact and Aspire Circle, a social enterprise and a nonprofit, both born in India but for the global south. It's my pleasure to kickstart the establishment of an impact future project for Africa today. 
we're at the cusp of impact capitalism around the world with over dollar 40 trillion of global investments moving to the impact continuum that is to responsible sustainable or impact investments the movement has already taken deep roots in africa as i discovered during my inaugural term as the ceo of the global steering group for impact investment a G7 task force, which was spun off into an independent multilateral. During my three year term, we brought 32 countries into the movement, of which three countries were from the African continent, South Africa, Ghana, and Zambia. My work with Kenya and Nigeria did not conclude during my term, but soon will. My biggest regret though was, and is, that I could not do more for Africa. As an ecosystem builder who also built India's Impact Investors Council and grew inbound impact investments into India from 300 million, you know, in back in 2013-14 to 1.1 billion in 2016-17 in similar conditions as Africa, you can understand how I feel about the missed opportunity. I feel the Impact Future Project is both my redemption and my restitution. Africa is much like India, where we launched the Impact Future Project last year. Africa's population is 1.34 billion. India is 1.38 billion. Africa's nominal GDP is $2.3 trillion. India is $2.8 trillion. The income spread too is similar. The richest countries in Africa, like Seychelles, Mauritius, Equatorial Guinea, Gabon, are above $5,000 per capita GDP, as are the richest Indian states of Goa, Sikkim, Delhi, and unfortunately, the poorer African countries like Congo, Burundi, and Liberia are sub dollar thousand per capita GDP, as are the Indian states of Bihar and Uttar Pradesh. Both Africa and India are agriculture dependent. Sub Saharan Africa has 60% of its workforce, 23% of its GDP in agriculture. India has 50% of its workforce, 20% of its GDP in agriculture. Both regions have a colonial past. The African continent and the Indian subcontinent are both now considered emerging. Therefore, you should not be surprised that after a successful launch here in India, engaging 500 business and investment leaders, the Impact Future Project is now in Africa. The Impact Future Project will be a great example of South-South collaboration, even though it will be African in its DNA. India can bring many learnings from its very vibrant impact investment ecosystem, where we just recently crossed dollar 2.5 billion of investments annually. Over the last decade, across 11 billion of cumulative impact investment, India delivered 1200 plus deals, 50 plus dedicated impact funds, about 100 exits, 11% dollar denominated IRR, 14% CAGR, reaching 200 million underserved customers and another 300 million through tech enabled inclusion. There will be things to learn especially how not to repeat India's mistakes. Our biggest blunder in India was that in early stages of impact investment growth, the microfinance movement ignored consumer protection and any semblance of self-governance. A few rogue players were found charging up to 60% interest rates to the poor, making credit card companies look like charities. In 2010, the market collapsed with media and government calling the microfinance sector as profiteers. As politicians rushed in asking poor not to pay back loans, hundreds of millions of dollars were written off. The poor make good customers. But impact investment purpose should not be to exploit this fortune at the bottom of the pyramid, but to think of them as humans whose potential must be unlocked. In India, the central bank stepped in to regulate microfinance, and it took years to forget the ghost of 2010. In 2014-15, however, 10 of these microfinance players were given small finance bank licenses, and the rest of the success story is history. Africa's rising impact markets and actors should now collaborate for consumer protection, for self-regulation, for bigger ideas for impact, for impact accounting and reporting standards, and to collectively build a better ecosystem with deeply connected players, not just impact enterprises, impact investors, nonprofits, and governments, but also mainstream corporations and commercial investors. That's where the Impact Future Project comes in. And the time is ripe. Impact investment transactions are coming of age in Africa. Just last year, 
IFC, IFU, and Properco invested 108 million in North African healthcare company Humania. The Rise Fund invested 47.5 million in Series C in the digital payments provider Cellulent. And Ghana headquartered M Pharma with 400 pharmacies across Africa cumulatively raised over $40 million, 17 million just last year. Clearly, Africa's tipping point for impact is near. However, in all our enthusiasm, we should not forget that almost 600 million people in Africa still lack access to electricity. Four in 10 live without safe drinking water. A fifth of primary age children are out of school. And 237 million people are malnourished. If there ever was a silver bullet, the impact economy is it. Impact financing holds immense potential. The African Development Bank alone has helped to connect 18 million people to electricity, 100 plus million people with access to improved transport, and 60 million people with access to improved water and sanitation. So imagine the future where over the coming decade, accelerated by the pursuit of SDGs and the era of impact capitalism, we grow impact investments in Africa across the, and all investments across the impact continuum, 10 folds or more. That's the future worth fighting for, worth organizing for. That's the ambition of the Impact Future Project for Africa. Please do join and support the initiative. Thank you. Our next speaker is Mr. Nick O'Donohoe, the Chief Executive Officer of the Commonwealth Development Corporation. He has a long history in the impact movement and can share a lot of insights with us. Please welcome Mr. O'Donohoe. Firstly, can I extend a big thank you to the organizers for giving me this opportunity to speak to you all today at the eighth annual Sam Kalp Forum. I have the privilege of being the chief executive of ZDC, and I'm sure many of you are aware of, of our work. But in a nutshell, we are the world's oldest impact investor, and we were the world's first development finance institution. Today, we currently have over 1,200 investments in Africa and South Asia, and a portfolio valued at over $5 billion. And last month, I was delighted to confirm that CDC would again be investing a further $1 billion in Africa in 2021. And that money will be invested directly in companies or, or via private equity firms and venture capital funds. We believe we're the largest private equity fund investor on the continent. And in addition to that, we provide a range of other products such as debt and trade finance. Most importantly, though, we have a mandate to bring about positive economic social and environmental change through all our investments, as well as to make a modest return for the UK taxpayer. And as I said, we're the world's first DFI. Uh, we were founded 73 years ago. When asked about the purpose of CDC, our first chairman, Lord Reed, who is also the founder of the BBC, said it was to do good without losing money. And that's really always been our purpose and our mission. And as I said, that's what makes us the oldest impact investor in the world. And of course, there's no magic bullet to being a successful development finance institution or impact investor, particularly in Africa. First of all, you have to invest in sustainable and well-managed businesses. And that means having the same rigorous financial modeling and analysis as any mainstream investor. And we may be somewhat more flexible in accepting a lower risk-adjusted return, but we can't be flexible on basic financial disciplines and due diligence. And secondly, you have to invest in a responsible way. Over the last 20 years, I'm proud to say that development finance institutions have really led the way in improving environmental, social, and governance standards. And we continue to do that today. And that commitment to strong environmental standards, good governance, health and safety for employees, living wage rates, respect for human rights is non-negotiable. In what we do. And thirdly, you need to do better than just doing no harm. You need to seek positive impact. And that means you need to ask, what difference am I making to people's lives? Who benefits from each investment we make? How do they benefit? And by how much? What would happen if we didn't make the investment? Would someone else make it? Would it happen anyway? How can we influence and create more developmental value by being owners or lenders to these businesses? So we ask those questions of ourselves when we invest directly, and we set the same standards and ask the same questions when we make fund investments. And finally, we always ask who our partners are. And most importantly, do they share our values? We recognize that we need local support in everything we do, 
whether that's through a local fund manager, a co-investor, sponsor, a management team, or a team of employees. And we know our best investments have come when there's alignment in both our financial and our development goals. When we were aligned, for example, with Liquid Telecom, when we agreed to invest $200 million in that company two years ago. And we believed, and the company believed, that high-speed internet access was critical to the continent's development. And we shared Stride Mutawaya's vision of building a fiber network, network from Cairo to the Cape and Dhaka to Mombasa. And we were also prepared to bet that the company's management could execute such an ambitious strategy and do it profitably. We were also aligned with Lafarge when we agreed to form a joint venture called 14 Trees in Malawi about four years ago to develop initially low carbon bricks and more recently to use 3D printing to, to bring technology that will make building homes and schools faster, cheaper and 30% more efficient. We we're also aligned with a much smaller company called M Pharma based in Ghana who are using modern technology to increase access to pharmaceuticals through community pharmacies across Africa. Today that business serves approximately a million patients through a network of over 400 pharmacies across five African countries. And indeed during the coronavirus pandemic, M Pharma has been able to partner with local medical laboratories in some of these countries, convert them to testing centers and rapidly increase the number of tests available. So far, over a million testing kits have been procured and dis distributed. And you know, those are just three examples, but they're the type of things that make us proud to be a development investor. And what they share, leaders who have a vision for change, an ambition to improve lives, and the belief and the financial discipline to be able to do it by building strong, sustainable, and profitable businesses. And you know, when we look at Africa today, we see a continent of enormous human and natural resources. And we see a young, vibrant, and entrepreneurial work workforce, which doesn't want aid, but wants opportunity. We see a continent that, despite its many challenges, has the ability to deliver decades of growth that create jobs and improve the lives of hundreds of millions of people, and also attracts hundreds of billions of dollars of new investment. Where do we see those opportunities? We see them in clean energy and helping co countries develop economies that are adaptable and more resilient to climate change. And that's a key focus for us and we're targeting 30% of our total investment this year to be in climate finance. There are still 600 million people on the continent without access to reliable power and making that available in a way that allows for a transition to a carbon neutral economy is a critical objective of CDC. The development of digital infrastructure is also going to be critical to the African continent over the next decade. And as I mentioned in the liquid example, a simple thing like affordable internet connectivity allows for a whole ecosystem of businesses to spring up, as well as providing critical services like banking uh, to underserved communities. And DFIs like CDC can do two things in, 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 achieving, in helping to achieve that. Firstly, we can provide the hundreds of millions of dollars necessary to build the critical infrastructure. But secondly, we can also provide growth capital to fund young entrepreneurs who want to take advantage of that connectivity to build the businesses and create the jobs of the future. So there are lots of fantastic opportunities out there for impact investors. Uh, but to be a successful impact investor, you need to be patient. You need to be willing to be counter cyclical. You need to look through the short term problems and focus on the long term opportunities. And being an impact investor is hard. Our job is not to crowd into businesses where the returns may seem very attractive, but the impact on people's lives is negative or non-existent. Nor frankly is it our opportunity, is it our job to pursue opportunities that may create enormous benefits, but where businesses are unsustainable. And that, was, that is what makes our dual mandate so difficult, but at the same time, so worthwhile. And that's what CDC was set up to do, it's what we've done successfully for the last 73 years and what we will continue to do in the decades to come. And I know you're all here at Sandkalp because you want to make a difference. And I wish you all a very interesting and stimulating conference and all success in building those impact businesses which can help Africa grow 
take advantage of its enormous opportunities and change its people's lives for the better. Please join me in welcoming our next speaker, my old dear friend, Nomsa Daniels. We met first in New York in the 80s, if you can believe that. And she's now the Director of Business Development for Anibok Investment Research Chambers, based in Johannesburg. Welcome, Namsa. My name is Namsa Daniels, and I'm the Director for Business Development at Anibok Investment Research Chambers, which is a company in Johannesburg that invests on behalf of its clients in listed securities in Africa and other asset classes. We're delighted to support the launch of the Impact Future Project in Africa by Aspire Impact. Over the years, our investment philosophy has been shaped by a few things we are passionate about, which are raising the incomes of ordinary Africans, finding ways of making more efficient use of people's time, and improving the quality of people's lives by giving them better access to education and decent housing. Our impact investment strategy is also aligned to several of the UN Sustainable Development Goals, such as ending poverty, quality education, decent work and economic growth, gender equality, sustainable cities and communities, and climate action. Several years ago, we invested in a company in Cote d'Ivoire, which is close to the Liberian border. This company is listed on the regional stock exchange. The business model of this company is that it has a large plantation of rubber and palm oil trees, and it is surrounded by a large catchment area of small-scale farmers who produce rubber in very small farming lots. The large plantation owners sell improved seeds to the farmers, and they help the farmers to raise their productivity. In exchange for that, they buy the output of those farmers, and with that output, they are able to increase the use of their own factory. So by working with thousands of small-scale farmers, they are able to make economic activity in that area greater than it would otherwise be. Over and above that, the plantation is able to provide medical services, not just for its workers, but for the people in the area, and it's also able to assist with education. This is an interesting symbiotic relationship because when the system is working well, the unit costs of processing rubber go down, the income of farmers increases, and that's beneficial to everyone. We call this collaborative capitalism, and that's one of the models of impact investing we like to support. A variant of that is what we're exploring now with a company in Kenya, which is trying to figure out how to lease agricultural equipment by the day to small farmers. We've also been early investors in a company that was a pioneer in sustainable forestry in Ghana. One of our newer investments is in a social enterprise in the education and employment arena, uh, where we happen to be the only African institutional investor. The idea behind this business is to solve the shortage of university places for African students and address the complaint of employers that graduates are often not equipped with the right skills for the job market. So we've set up a university with school holidays devoted to internships where students can get practical hands-on experience. Students are given educational loans to take courses that are six to 12 months long. And when they are able to get employment, they repay those loans over a five-year period. In terms of job creation potential, this company has set itself a huge goal where it wants to create 2 million jobs by 2030. A new area we are exploring is affordable housing where we are targeting the middle to poor segment, where access to decent housing is in short supply or is simply unaffordable. We know that Africa is going to urbanize, but we want to avoid urbanization that is disorganized and chaotic. For this venture, we've teamed up with a company from Singapore, and what we're trying to do is figure out how we can apply lessons from countries like Singapore to work with African governments or municipalities to develop African versions of inexpensive housing that use green technologies, for example, and other innovations in housing. So in short, we see huge potential in the impact investing space in Africa in the sectors that I've mentioned. We believe that success will come from supporting ventures that can create huge employment opportunities 
and sustainable jobs in new industries, or opportunities that tap into the dynamism of the informal sector, or lastly, opportunities that drive down the cost of capital for small businesses. For me personally, investing in women and women entrepreneurs will also have a big multiplier effect in combining social impact with economic advancement. A digital platform like IFP Africa is important because it will bring together like-minded people, foster collaboration in new areas, and provide fertile ground for new areas to take root and be scaled across industries and geographies. Although you cannot carbon copy what has been done in places like India and other emerging markets, we can learn from them and find African ways of adapting these ideas to our local environments and contexts so that we can ultimately change Africa's economic trajectory. Let's welcome our next speaker, Mr. Tope Ajayi. He's a young architect trained in Canada, came back to Nigeria to help develop affordable housing for students, as well as to launch some innovative financial investment platforms. Welcome, Tope. My name is Tope Ajayi. I'm the CEO of Beaver Group, a company focused on affordable housing and financial services for the masses in Nigeria. I am always grateful to my parents for their sacrifice in sponsoring my siblings and I as international students outside Africa. This experience and exposure completely changed my perspective of what life should be, how people should live, and why the care for the human person is vital to the development of any community, society, or nation. With this paradigm shift in perspective, the vision to make people's lives better in Nigeria became my mission. Our company created a platform called BRICS, which stands for Beaver Real Estate Investment Communities. The BRICS platform pulls people together as fractional investors for community development projects with annual financial returns to subscribers. We basically made community development simple, attractive, and sustainable. People looking to securely grow their wealth while doing good for a community simply visit BR eics.com and they subscribe. This initiative has become instrumental to the development and management of over 3,000 affordable housing for students in Nigeria and this is offered to students for less than a dollar a day. Our long-term vision is to grow this platform into a publicly traded real estate investment trust for community development in, in Africa. Our company has also expanded to providing financial services to the masses in Nigeria with an omni-channel for secure thrift savings and easy access to credit for basic essential needs in education, housing, and healthcare for every Nigerian. Now, similar to most sub-Saharan African uh, countries, Nigeria has a huge infrastructure deficit which considerably limits efforts towards achieving inclusive growth sustainable development and poverty reduction. With our infrastructure stock estimated at 20 to 25 percent of GDP, Nigeria's infrastructure stock is still significantly lower than the recommended international benchmark of 70 percent of GDP. The National Integrated Infrastructure Master Plan estimates that a total of three trillion dollars of investment or a hundred billion dollars annually is required over a 30-year period to bridge Nigeria's infrastructure gap. These social and physical infrastructure gaps cannot be solely financed with government oil revenue. Consequently, this has created a platform for ideas that explore opportunities to transform capitalism to impact capitalism. Over the past decade, Africa's economy has consistently grown faster than the world as a whole. And unlike previous resource-driven booms, this time Africa's success is built on foundations that should be that, that should be sustainable for the long term. Across Africa, the opportunities are compelling. However, the continent must overcome its social, political, and economic challenges. Despite Africa's strong performance, poverty and income inequality continue to significantly pose challenges. 
job creation is not keeping pace with the, the, with the continent's rapidly growing population. Lack of investment in infrastructure has left much of sub-Saharan Africa with insufficient and unreliable power supply, which hinders long-term growth. However, the future of Africa and impact economy is very bright, as a new and confident African middle class is emerging, while trade is also expanding rapidly. Africa has also started leapfrogging old technologies and embracing the digital revolution. It's currently leading the world in innovations such as mobile payments. So at Biba Group, we understand that jobs are essential to eradicating poverty and fostering real development in, in, in economies. This is why we are advancing ideas to develop workers' housing in urban areas. We are also innovating around financial services to fuel employment by making it easier for people to access finance and other financial services that help local businesses set up, trade and expand. The Aspire Impact Futures project can make more Africans better off by providing leadership and networking platforms for common action that local, uh, uh, local con uh, and local based co uh, country associations. Aspire Initiative should also seek to, to, to work with governments to improve uh, uh, barriers to economic activities and facilitate the, the deepening of impact ecosystem in Africa. We commend Aspire Impact Futures Project in Africa for their support and development initiative. We look forward to continue working with them to make life better for everyone in Africa. Thank you. Thank you for your participation in the first day of the inaugural session of the Impact Future Project for Africa, or IFP Africa. We sincerely hope that today's presentations spark some new insights in you regarding possible ways to redesign the African impact ecosystem and how to collaborate across silos more effectively. Please forward any questions or comments that you have to us so we can continue to deepen our inquiry into the future of impact for Africa. Thank you. See you tomorrow.